For more than half a century, Soyuz spacecraft have been the backbone of the Russian space program. It is a type of spacecraft that the Soviet Union and then Russia have used for decades to launch cosmonauts into space. Today's Soyuz missions are best known for trips to the ISS. However, the spacecraft has a long operational history going back to the 1960s, starting with its first uncrewed mission, November 28, 1966. Over the years, Soyuz spacecraft have sent cosmonauts to several types of space stations – the Almaz series, Salyut series, Mir, and today's ISS. Notably for years, the only method of delivering crew to the ISS was the Soyuz craft, leading NASA to purchase seats for their astronauts. NASA bought 71 seats at a cost of nearly $4 billion over the course of six years. But as of 2020, the SpaceX Dragon rockets can deliver American crews to the space station. This is also at the time that the U.S. trampoline has gradually surpassed the Soyuz in most every respect. At this point, what SpaceX Dragon can do is shock Russia's best rocket, Soyuz. We'll talk about that today in this episode of Alpha Tech with five features that Soyuz cannot compare to the SpaceX Dragon. As the U.S. and Russia are facing off over the invasion of Ukraine, the two adversary nations are quietly cooperating on another life-or-death matter, and that's making sure astronauts are not stranded in space. On December the 15th, International Space Station Mission Control halted a planned spacewalk aboard the orbiting laboratory because of a startling new problem. A Russian Soyuz space capsule docked to the facility was suddenly spewing gobs of fluid into space. The dramatic leak, which was a 0.8 millimeter hole, emptied the capsule's radiator of cooling fluid, and it's left NASA and Russia's Roscosmos with a new problem. How to safely transport two cosmonauts and one astronaut who had been scheduled to return home in the now-damaged capsule in March. The capsule also functioned as the station's emergency escape pod for those three, leaving them stranded if a serious problem develops in the station's living quarters. Just like a car with a busted radiator, the Soyuz capsule would overheat with the radiator emptied of cooling fluid. The capsule now relies on air from the station for cooling, but closing its hatch saw temperatures inside rise to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's even before sending it home to Earth on a re-entry burn through the atmosphere, when temperatures inside would normally rise even with a functioning cooling system. The situation, one of the more dangerous the ISS has faced in years, comes decades into the two nations' long partnership running the station, which cost the U.S. $1.3 billion a year to operate. Born of the end of the Cold War, the space station's role as a geopolitical symbol of cooperation between the world's most formidable nuclear powers has long outweighed its scientific achievements. If the analysis expected this month concludes that a return trip on the damaged Soyuz would endanger the returnees, astronaut Frank Rubio and cosmonauts Dmitry Patelin and Sergei Prokopyev, Russia will have to send up an empty Soyuz to bring them home sometime in February. NASA has also reached out to SpaceX about returning the astronauts home in a Dragon space capsule which normally carries four astronauts but has capacity for seven in an emergency. Talking about this, this sizable volume is one of the Dragon's five advantages over Soyuz. The Dragon is roomy with capability of up to seven guys over twice the Soyuz. Typically, up to four will fly on it, leaving sizable volume for up mass and down mass of supplies and equipment. Soyuz spacecraft are very small and has Spartan crew compartments. This limits movement, especially on a trip longer than two days. A three-person crew would be pretty uncomfortable during that time, which is why the Soyuz ISS flights are often using a hybrid launch configuration that gets the crew to the station in a few hours rather than days. Besides, little to no room for supplies or experiments, especially on return. While the Soyuz can carry up some supplies in its orbital module, the module's jettison before re-entry, and there's very little room for the return of anything within the descent module where the crew resides to landing. The Soyuz can take 340 kilograms of cargo with the crew of three, whereas the Dragon can carry about 6,000 kilograms of cargo with a crew of four in its pressurized volume and the unpressurized trunk. Secondly, operation time in space and reusable hardware. The Soyuz can work for 180 days being docked to the ISS, where the Dragon can work for 210 days and can fly freely for 10. This is an important feature. Besides, the Soyuz capsule is not reusable, and two-thirds of the capsule never makes it back to Earth, at least not in one piece. 
However, the Falcon 9 first stage that carries the vehicle during its first two minutes of flight is fully reusable for many flights. The Crew Dragon vehicle can also be refurbished for reuse, although NASA's commercial crew vehicles are not expected to be reused within the contract period. Refurbishment and reusability mean savings per launch for NASA and SpaceX. This affects their cost. With the partly reusable Falcon 9 rocket and partially reusable Dragon spacecraft versus the fully expendable Soyuz, SpaceX charges half the price. A seat on Dragon 2 is $55 million, and on Soyuz, it's $89 million. Now let's talk about unpressurized payload upmass. The Crew Dragon's trunk is a simple, unpressurized cylinder that on its exterior provides solar power generation and thermal control. Its near-empty interior allows, like the original cargo-only Dragon, the ability to bring sizable elements to the ISS, such as the international docking adapters, station arm elements, equipment packages, and other external components. This is a highly useful feature as no other spacecraft has, save the retired space shuttles or the JAXA Corturi resupply vehicles. They have the ability to provide replacement ISS elements of these kinds. Finally, state-of-the-art technology. Maybe you'll tell me it's really not fair to compare it head-to-head -head with a spacecraft designed and built a half century later, but there is a difference, right? It was only recently the Soyuz received any updates from old analog control systems to digital. While the Russians have mastered the art of automated launch, docking, and landing systems, they use antiquated technology. Crew Dragon has similar ability, but with greater robustness. The Dragon designer swept all that away, replacing everything, including the control stick with three large touchscreens facing four side-by-side -side seats. Each screen is capable of calling up as many as 10 sets of displays, allowing the crew to focus on a particular set of systems, guidance, environmental, electrical, and more. Ideally, the spacecraft helps the astronauts so much that they have virtually nothing to do. The ship operates entirely autonomously. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.